Hello and welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So if you're wondering why you haven't been able to get the latest GPU or CPU or any of the latest PC hardware, well, I think one of the reasons might be that there's a global shipping issue going around the world at the moment. And no, it's got nothing to do with 500,000 GPUs stuck in a Korean port. That was a bit of an April Fool's joke. Um, so uh, it's got nothing to do with that. This is uh, real news and uh, that's what we're going to talk about today because actually I find the situation really interesting. So hopefully you find it interesting as well. Okay, so if you like this video, make sure to click the like button and also to subscribe this channel for more videos like this. Okay, so just as a bit of a warning, I know my subscribers are gamers and PC tech enthusiasts and um, the information that I'm about to show you and also the news article that I'm going to be referring to, they refer to a global shipping issue rather than specifically targeting uh, PC hardware stuff. So uh, just letting you know that uh, off the top and that uh, if you're wondering, well, is this NVIDIA GPU related? Well, yes and no, because uh, this affects pretty much uh, everything that gets shipped around the world. So any consumer product, any industry products. And uh, I think this is interesting anyway for you guys to know because um, if you're sitting there wondering why your NVIDIA GPU uh, hasn't arrived yet, well, I think uh, some of this uh, should explain uh, why we haven't been getting as many GPUs as we would have liked. Okay, so just to start things off, for people who don't know me, I uh, work a full-time job, I'm a civil engineer, and I make roads, bridges, buildings, that sort of thing. So uh, for this particular job, I was actually trying to order equipment from China. So I started off uh, emailing my uh, shipping agent uh, to inquire about prices for shipping and I needed like 29 containers. So um, let me read you the email because I think it's pretty interesting. And he says, uh, Dear Jim RPG, uh, the current shortage of equipment is very critical so the freight charges are flying through the roof. No carrier wants to offer any rates other than current sailing because the space is limited and shortage of containers so you will not be able to get a realistic rate for shipment which is more than two to three months away. Just to share, we have customers who used to pay USD $500 per 40-foot container from Shanghai to Port Klang, and Port Klang is in Malaysia, uh, but now have to pay USD $2,500 per 40-foot container, and the rate is still expected to escalate further. The situation might be clearer after Chinese New Year, so please be patient. You can check with your suppliers on the present situation in China to get a feel of the havoc in the market. Okay, so we can infer a couple of things from this. And I would say number one is that the AIB partners, they probably don't want to pay five times the shipping amounts for shipping those GPUs. Although I will say with a 40 foot container, you can probably fit about 5,000 GPUs in there. So if I've done my maths correctly, that would be like maybe one uh, or $2 per GPU. So I'm sure they would even pay f with that inflated price. But I would say that this inflated price is an indic indication of the fact that there's simply no free containers in China. So when I called my shipping agent, I said uh, to him, well, what's going on? And he told me that a lot of these shipping containers are stuck in US and Europe, and they simply haven't made their way back to China. So uh, they, he said that it's probably to do with the COVID-19 lockdowns and there's more restrictions there and obviously less people working at the ports. So uh, the, sh the ships have actually been stuck at these ports and they haven't been able to get back to China to uh, do more shipments. And a lot of these containers are also stuck in Europe as well. Okay, let's take a look at this news article from Nikkei Asia and it says China shipping logjam chokes Christmas in US and Europe. And I thought this was super interesting. I really urge you guys to go and check out this article. I'll leave a link in the description below. But essentially, uh, they're saying the Shanghai Containerized Freight Index on December 11 reached its highest level since its launch in October 2009 with average spot rates between Shanghai and Los Angeles standing at an all-time record level of $3,871 per 40-foot equivalent units. Lothar Toma... Managing Director Aaron C. at Gerbruder Weiss, an Austrian-based logistics company that has 19 branches in China, explained that the mess started in February when China closed its ports during the COVID-19 lockdowns, thoroughly upsetting global circulation of shipping containers after the conditions in China's industrial and logistics sectors normalized in the second quarter of the year. 
and Chinese exports rebounded, COVID-19 lockdowns in Europe and the US then took their toll on the European and American ports logistics, causing the time a container spends on land to double, in Germany's case from one week to two. So there's a quote here from Toma and he says, exacerbating this, ship owners saw that prices grew faster on the China-US routes than the China-Europe routes, so they withdrew capacity from the latter to make more money on the former, which makes even more sense when considering that the China-US route is about 10 days shorter, Toma said. So I think this is really fascinating because uh, for people in Europe, such as uh, not an Apple fan, I know he's talked about the stock shortage situation in Europe a few times, and he says that there's simply nothing in Europe. Well, this might be a reason why uh, there's nothing in Europe, because all of these ships have decided that they'd rather do the China-US route than the China-Europe route. Here's an article from The Edge Markets and it says here, no easy solution to global container shortage. The shortage of containers is due to the rebound in economic activities in China, as well as the peak period demand for goods in the US and European markets, owing to the Christmas and New Year holidays. At the same time, demand for American and European goods from Asian markets has been weak, which led to an uneven trade flow. The slow return of containers from American ports also exacerbates the matter, as many liners do not want to bring back empty containers to Asia, as that means extra costs for them, costs which are transferred to Asian exporters if they want the containers. So uh, what we've actually seen is uh, there's more to this issue as well. So not only are there COVID-19 restrictions at the ports that are delaying these ships getting back to China, but also these ships are uh, going to stay in the US and European market uh, while the prices are high in China or globally, as a matter of fact. But uh, they're willing to stay in the US and Europe to do those routes because uh, the people there are willing to pay more for their goods. And the other thing to note is that these shippers, well, they don't want to just uh, return all of these extra containers that they took to US and Europe um, empty because uh, there's not as many goods coming out of US and Europe as there is coming out of China. So they've been shipping all of these goods um, full, um, shipping more containers than they ever have out of China, but they can't get that same demand to go back from America and Europe to China because in China they're simply not interested in American and European goods. So this tweet is from Daniel Ahmad back in September and he wrote, Sony are using air freight to ensure that PS5 can meet demand supply enough units. The company has booked 60 flights from October Delta 747 to ship consoles to retailers. This supply is expected to last through the quarter. Air freight is faster than C but more expensive. So as you can see, uh, Sony has already preempted this. Um, so they knew that the Christmas period was going to be a problem, especially with the pandemic, so they booked flights for their console, which is why you see so many consoles out there on the market versus the amount of PC hardware that you see. So, And I think uh, Microsoft did this as well, so give credit to Microsoft as well. Um, but I think in terms of NVIDIA and um, AMD, well, I would say that um, a lot of these issues are probably coming from the board partners as well. So the board partners, uh, they're probably the ones directing the shipments of these GPUs. So uh, ASUS and Gigabyte MSI. Um, and if they can't get a boat, well, there's not really that much that NVIDIA can really do anyway. And I wish I could bring you some good news on New Year's Day. It didn't want to start 2021 off on the wrong foot, but uh, we're trying to keep it real here. So uh, it is what it is, right? So there's not much you can do, but if you know this information, well, at least uh, you can put into your mind uh, what it is like there and you don't have to speculate as much anymore. Okay, so that's going to be it for this one. Make sure to click the like button and also to uh, subscribe to the channel. Subscribe to me or follow me on uh, Twitter as well. And I'm happy to uh, connect with everybody out there. So uh, make sure to hit Twitter up as well. Okay, uh, that's going to be it for this one. And I'll see you in the next video.